Okay, yes, that's right. In this video, we're going to be going over another example. We're going to talk about induced voltage in a coil of wire, and this is the situation that we have. We have this coil of wire, which is 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. This is a square coil of wire. It's currently in this magnetic field, which is designated by these dots, which means the magnetic field is coming out of the page at us. The magnetic field strength is 50 milliteslas, and in a moment, when we start, we're going to move this coil to the right with a velocity, a constant velocity of 5 centimeters per second. The coil is 25 centimeters squared, as we said, or 25 centimeters on a side, and the magnetic field is inside this blue box, and that magnetic field has an, uh, also is a square, and it's 50 centimeters on a side. Okay, and of course, we want to figure out what is the induced voltage? That's the end product that we want to get here. And we first we should ask ourselves, well, when will there be an induced voltage? Okay, now this is the equation that we're going to use to calculate the, the induced voltage. This is a Faraday's law. But the question is, when will, what, what does that mean? What does all this stuff mean? It means that there will be, a voltage will be induced in the coil when the magnetic flux through the coil changes over time. Not when it just... Uh, is a magnetic flux, but the magnetic flux, the amount of flux, the amount of magnetic field inside that coil has to change over time. And that's what this equation says. This is the symbol for the magnetic flux. This is over time, and this is n is the number of windings in the coil. Now, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to answer these five questions. We're going to calculate the magnetic flux at time equals zero seconds. We're going to graph the change in the magnetic flux. We're going to calculate the induced EMF, the induced voltage, and then we're going to graph that, and then we're going to determine, using Lenz's law, the direction of the induced current as we pull that or we, as that coil of wire moves out of that magnetic field. Okay? So what we're going to do first is we're going to calculate the magnetic flux at time zero. So we're going to say now, right here, this is time zero. We haven't moved the coil. We're going to move the coil. We're not, we haven't moved it yet. So what is the magnetic flux at this point right now? Well, this is the equation we use to calculate the magnetic flux. It's A, the area of the coil, times the magnetic field strength, times the cosine of theta. Theta is the angle between the coil and the magnetic field. And those two things, the coil and the magnetic field, are right angles to each other. Right angles is 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 is 1. So we're just going to kind of drop this term. I'm not going to put the 1 on there. But we can figure out the current magnetic flux as taking the area of the coil, which is just 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. You've got to put that into meters. And I multiply that times the magnetic field strength with its 80 milliteslas. We've got to change the milli into tesla, so milli is 10 to the minus 3. And we're just going to multiply those two or three values together. And we get that the magnetic flux, the amount of magnetic field or the magnetic flux inside that coil right now is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 Webers. Okay, I just want to remind you, this cosine theta is the angle. We said that's 90. The cosine of 90 is 1, so I could have put down here times 1, but generally just leave that off. Okay? So this is the magnetic flux at time 0, at the start. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to graph the change in the magnetic flux over time. We said we're going to take this coil and move it to the right at 5 centimeters per second. Now this is 50 centimeters across, this is 25 centimeters across. So when we move the coil first, the first thing we're going to do basically is move the coil to the edge of the magnetic field. When we do that, the amount of magnetic field, the flux inside the coil will not change. It doesn't matter anywhere we take the coil and move it around in this area the flux will be the same because the area remains the same and the magnetic field strength stays the same. So when we take that coil and we move it to the edge of the magnetic field, that's the first kind of step, the magnetic flux doesn't change. Now, how long does it take to do that? Well, this coil is 25 centimeters. This distance is 50 centimeters. That means from the coil to the edge, there was 12, <coughs> excuse me, 12.5 centimeters, and we're moving it 5 centimeters a second, so 12.5 divided by 5 is 2.5. Okay, so it would take, it took 2.5 seconds for the coil to move from its original position to the edge. So for the first 2.5 seconds, the magnetic field strength and, well, excuse me, the magnetic field strength, the magnetic flux remains the same. So it's constant. There is a magnetic flux, but it's constant. Okay, that's kind of the first thing. Now we're going to take the coil and we're going to move it out, continue moving at a constant velocity, so to speak, 
we're going to move it out of the magnetic field. That's the first thing we do. We move it out of the magnetic, not the first thing. That's the second thing we're going to do. We move it out of the magnetic field. Well, as it does that, the magnetic flux goes from this value. Well, what's the magnetic flux now? The area hasn't changed. The magnetic field strength hasn't changed, but the, there's no magnetic field inside the coil. So now the magnetic flux for the coil at this position is zero. Area, magnetic field strength inside the coil is zero. So that means that the flux goes from this value down to zero. Well, how long does it take to do that? This is 25 centimeters across. It's moving at 5 centimeters a second, 25 divided by 5. That means at a constant velocity, at a constant rate, it takes 5 seconds from 2.5 seconds to 7.5 seconds for the flux to go from 5 times 10 to the minus 3 back to zero. And then, of course, we move the coil away a little bit more, and it's still zero, and it remains zero for those first, for those 10 seconds. Okay? So there you go. That is how you calculate the magnetic flux, and that's a graph of the magnetic flux over time. Now you remember from our equation, Faraday's law, that there's a, uh, a voltage will be induced in that coil when the magnetic flux changes over time, and it's only changing during this 2.5 to 7.5 seconds for those five seconds. Okay? So now we're going to go and do that, and you'll see when we calculate the induced voltage, okay, this was the original um, magnetic flux, and it went to zero. So really the change in the magnetic flux, okay, is minus 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3 Webers. Okay, it went from the initial value of this down to zero. The change is the final minus the initial, so it's zero minus this value. And then we get that the induced voltage, this is the equation for the induced voltage, is the change in the magnetic flux, which is minus. And then we're going to do that. It took five seconds for the coil to come out of the magnetic field. And therefore, the induced voltage during those five seconds, when the magnetic flux was changing, the induced voltage is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. Okay? Now, I want to point out a couple things about this equation. This n, this is the number of windings. Now, I didn't say this, but we're just assuming, if it doesn't say in the problem, you just assume there's only one winding. n is the number of windings, so this is one. And I didn't write a one here because generally you don't write the one there. All right? It didn't say there was 500 or 1,000 or 50 windings. It didn't say, we'll assume n is one. Also, this minus sign, you have to keep this minus sign, which is this minus sign, and this minus sign is the, from the change in the magnetic flux. It decreases, and that means there's a minus sign in front here. Final minus initial. Final was zero. The initial was 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Zero minus 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3 is minus 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Minus and minus, and you end up with a positive voltage. All right? So you got to keep those things, the signs. It's kind of a little bit of particulars about that equation. Now we're going to graph the induced voltage. Now you remember we said the voltage is only changing from 2.5 seconds to 5.5 seconds because there's only an induced voltage when it changes over time. And when we take the coil and we first move it to the edge, it's not changing over time. There is a flux, but it's not changing. So the voltage that's induced is zero. There's no voltage. But then when we move the coil out, then there's going to be an induced voltage. And it takes five seconds to do that. And this is the induced voltage down here. So this is a value we calculated from the previous slide. So for five seconds, there's a constant induced voltage, okay? And that's from 2.5 to 5.5 seconds. Excuse me. From 2.5 to 7.5 seconds, which is five seconds. Then when we move the coil farther away, there's no change. It's still, it's the magnetic flux is still zero, and therefore you have no induced voltage. So that's a graph of the induced voltage, okay? So, yeah, that's all I want to say about that. Okay, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to try to determine, we're going to determine the direction of the current. Now, this is a little tricky. This is Lenz's law. This is my coil of wire. See, here's my coil of wire. It's going to be moving to the right. It's going to be moving out. Now, the coil doesn't like it when the magnetic environment inside the coil changes. As you move the coil out, the amount of magnetic field is going to be decreasing. The direction of that magnetic field is out of the board, out of the screen, out of the piece of paper. 
So the coil, we're going to use our right hand, right hand rule. The, <coughs> excuse me, the coil is going to produce a current. The current is going to try to keep the magnetic field conditions the same. It's going to try to produce more magnetic field that comes out of the page so that it won't decrease as we take that coil out of that magnetic field. So Lenz's law tells us we can use our right hand rule. We point our thumb in the direction of the current. It's pointing in the direction of the current. Our fingers are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. We want more out. So therefore, the current is going to be moving counterclockwise. When it moves counterclockwise, it will produce a magnetic field that inside the coil, the magnetic field will be coming out of the page. Okay? I think that's the most confusing thing about the whole lenses Faraday's law. All right, so that's counterclockwise. As you can see, I brought this in here. That's more coming out of the board, out of your computer screen, and therefore it's going to be, look at that, goes counterclockwise. So the current is going to be going counterclockwise. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. We went over the magnetic flux and the change. We went over how to figure out the induced voltage and the direction of the current. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.